as if it's the first time. <laughs> Monique <laughs> Narfen, <laughs> welcome to the lockdown sessions. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Great to be here. I'm very excited to have you here because you and I met, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe four years? Not even three. Not even three. So I know it's like a lifetime, but not even three. <laughs> <laughs> not even three years ago. Uh, when I was coming in um, with Walt Disney, so you work in the, the talent and development space yep. um, and you and I have worked on a number of initiatives and projects with your population, often in and around coaching, so we share that love. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it'd be really cool to get you in and we'll put a little disclaimer straight away, not representing your company, nope. so all views are your own <laughs> in, <laughs> in case you say anything. Um, but I wanted to have you to, to come here because obviously because of your job, you have quite a privileged position because you've had access to almost every element of an organization going through this process of lockdown. Mm. And suddenly from one day all being co-located to all now being virtual, your team's yep. a close team. So I always start with the same question and then we see kind of riff and jam from there. Sure. What what have you observed for yourself around others during this period? Because it's it's been more than a hundred days now, so I'm really keen to kind of learn from you. What, what what have you seen happening? What have you observed? Gosh, yeah, and I'm like, obviously I've listened to some of your other podcasts. Like wow, something deep and meaningful. You might not get that quite from me, but I'm lucky, I guess, in the way because we're a bit further down. In, in that journey and coming a bit out of lockdown and a bit more, you know, a bit more freedom. But I think at the start, what was really interesting was, I mean, I remember us being told, right, need to go home, that's it, we're all working from home. And everybody's like, right, off we go. And how quickly, actually, um, we as a team um, really pivoted, I guess, the way that we worked. So, as you say, really close team, um, we work really well together, really collaborative. The organisation as a whole is really collaborative. Um, I, you know, closely involved with doing our, our uh, um, learning and development calendar, so training sessions, predominantly in person, and we had to pivot really quickly, and I into you know fully virtual. And what I what has amazed me, and and not just that, but other things that have happened, is how quickly people really adapt. So stuff we've been talking about since I've joined the company, um, you know, being more blended, being more virtual, none of that happening really with much pace, then all of a sudden overnight, there we are, we have to do it. And just people really adapting to that. So I think what's been really interesting is seeing how adaptable people are on the one space and then on the other space um, in terms of like, well, I thought it was only going to be three or four weeks, you know, four months down the track, here we still are, and and how people have kind of made things work and worked around things. So, you know, how do we maintain that collaborative environment? How do we stay connected? Um, so that, and you know, and each of us learning a bit more about each other as well. So I guess at work, you go to work, you come home, you might go out for a drink after work and stuff, but now it's kind of like, you know, you see my kitchen, I've, you know, we've had, you know, partners walk past, parents, whatever it might be, but that kind of seeing a little bit more of an insight into people and getting to know them slightly at a, a different level, I suppose. Um, so that's it's, been nice. There's something in that, isn't there? Because although we're disconnected or we're digitally divided, we are inviting each other in to our homes, normally in our conversations I think I just saw Rocky walk yes, <laughs> <Here he was. laughs> and I think the first time I came into your kitchen I observed you know the wine rack uh, just over your left shoulder um, <laughs> yeah you might just be restacking it I I, I don't know right <laughs> um, so this this kind of knowing each other better has has that been one of the kind of really positive byproducts and actually a level of the level of intimacy actually has changed we are sharing more intimate stuff how we feel what's going on for us yeah I think so because I think you know also with colleagues who have children or you know that some of my colleagues um 
not just in my team, but more broadly, you know, they live alone and they might have, you know, traveled to get back to their family and things like that. So you're just getting that little bit of an insight and it just gives a different perspective. Um, interestingly, a, a really close friend of mine um, started a new job um, with a, a big consulting um, firm, um, accountancy firm, and um, like on day one of lockdown, so she had to go in on the Friday, right, to collect her, her equipment um, she's in HR. She's in HR as well. Um, we met when we uh, worked at um, um, at Diageo together. Really good friends. Um, and she's had to kind of, you know, get to know her client base virtually. And actually, one of the things she said to me was, seeing them out of the corporate environment, seeing them in their homes, with some of this stuff going on, has actually been a, one of the positives of getting to know them at a different level. So, um, because sometimes I think at work, you know, you sometimes feel you have to be a certain way or you have to present in a certain way. There's, you know, certain behaviours. Um, I don't know, you know, what, what influences people, different things, but, you know, I must show up in a certain way. Whereas perhaps at work, we're still being professional, but at, in this environment, you're still professional, but actually you see just a slightly different side of somebody, maybe a little bit more vulnerability, um, in, in terms of who they are and you know what their interests are and you can tell a lot right I, we're all the same it's the same when I watch the news and they've got the MPs like on BBC they have the MPs in the morning you're just like peering behind them to say well what have they got what have they got there you know it just gives you this and you mentioned my wine rack I get lots of comments on that actually I am moving rooms short, shortly and I'm going to miss <laughs> that <laughs> I, uh, my, my brother gave me a great trick. He said to me that uh, when he's been having his meetings, because they go on quite long, uh, when people get up and go like to get a drink or a quick buy a break, he screenshots their background and then inserts it as a virtual background for him. <laughs> and so they then come back in and they're like, it's all a bit strange. But you're right, we do. We, we search and scan scan the background. I, I know, I think we were running a session with your guys, actually, a manager session. Um, and one of the uh, delegates on the workshop was a mum um, and had a young kid. And for one of the sessions, her three-year-old sat on her lap. And everyone on the yeah. group is, hiya, who's that? And, and everyone's really chit-chat. And, you know, I remember that news reporter or journalist, was it a journalist or was it an MP? Anyway, some guy who was sitting in his office on the BBC doing an interview and his kid came in. Yeah. And he was in Asia somewhere. And he's like, Screaming at his wife to drag the kid out. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. No longer do you do that. You know, it's no. like, yeah, the dog's in the background, the child's on the lap. Um, somebody has to walk by, you know, um, to get something out of the kitchen or whatever. So I think on that side, it's really opened things up. But there's a flip side to that as well, actually, which is coming more to the fore, and particularly in a, like, the sort of organisation that I work in, where it's very, very relationship-driven. Um, it's very, you know, um, collegiate in that way. And that networking, but not so much networking, but connecting piece, yeah. um, you, you, you tend to lose. So I've had numerous conversations with people around, just really miss that chat in the corridor or, hey, hi, Monique, haven't seen you for ages, you know, and it's kind of like those little interactions that you get that you just see somebody in the corridor or, or um, and you're, oh, yes, I just want to talk to you about this. So those interactions have to be much more engineered and planned in. And I wonder whether people, just in terms of connecting, going, oh, well, should I, should I send them a, you know, a WhatsApp or a Skype message or whatever it is, a tech message, a chat on Teams, you know, or are they busy? You know, are people really having some of those more in-the-moment conversations? And, and one of the things that a colleague and, my, and I do is, because um, often we talk over the desk, right? So mm. what do of this and I'm thinking about this so just to get that other perspective and um because we have very different styles but actually um that really and a couple of colleagues like that actually we have different styles and the way that we think and approach things but coming together really brings um like a solid um outcome and, and actually we often have the same end end in mind but it's how we get there is slightly different and so that piece is kind of missing you're kind of doing a lot more of the thinking on your own um so sometimes it's just like right let's just have a chat because actually i just want to bounce this off with you and feeling that you've got the permission to be able to 
do that where before you were quite comfortably over the desk go, oh, hey, um, have you got a moment to have a chat about it? Yeah. So that piece, I think, really has changed the dynamics of how people work. Um, and I don't think we can recreate it. Um, a number of clients, we were running a, a webinar for people on resilience and positive psychology. And it was for a group of leaders across EMEA, uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. And I did a little jam board exercise where I asked them for what were their concerns over the next three months for themselves. Mm. And they were saying how they've had weekly by it's bi-weekly, twice a week, I never know. Well, it could be twice a week or every other week. Okay, so I mean the, the twice a week version of right, bi-weekly. Yeah. <laughs> bi <-weekly. laughs> Always so confusing having, that one. <laughs> they're having twice a week meetings with their team. They're having three times a week meetings with their managers. They're having ad hoc conversations with their yeah. boss about how are you. What they miss is meeting someone in the corridor and having that chat with somebody who's not in their team at all. Yeah, yeah. And being able to recreate that or, you know, in, in your offices, you've got that just fantastic um, cafe. Yeah, and absolutely. And this cafe is where I meet people when I'm in town, um, <laughs> where I meet people from courses that I've sort of been on before or exactly. leaders that I've worked with. They go, oh, all right, Brad, and I'll sit down yeah. for five minutes and, and I don't even belong <laughs> in your organisation. Oh, you belong with that. <laughs> but it's it's yeah. we can't recreate that virtually and i and i think you're right this kind of the disconnection seems to be the most painful bit and mm. i saw my brother the other day and we kind of looked each other at the end and it was like we really wanted we didn't but we really wanted to just hug each other it was, yeah. yeah and it's like okay bye <laughs> It felt yeah. pathetic, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess from a family perspective, as you know, I'm, I'm uh, originally from New Zealand, so my family's all out there. I'm used to being at a distance from my, my family. So actually, this whole pandemic, whilst obviously I was still worried about them and probably connected with my mum much more frequently than I would ordinarily, I, didn't, I don't think I felt that... Um, like a lot of people I know felt that kind of wrench from the family, you know, that, that wasn't quite so um, so obvious because um, I'm used to just them not being close anyway physically. But from my friends, I felt that. So friends who I would see really regularly, um, who who well, yeah, we do this, we do a bit of a have a drink, glass of wine over sky for whatever you know regularly. But it's not the same because. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just, I don't know why, because it wouldn't even meet for hours on end. It'd be quick dinner after work because, um, you know, they live out one way and I live out the other. But it's just that physicality piece, having a hug. Um, I don't know, it just, there's just something, obviously, you can't recreate in a virtual setting. And you do your best and it works. But for me personally, it's not something I would want. This is not the way that I want to live on going, you know, it doesn't it doesn't work wholly for me. Not on an ongoing basis anyway. I, I think a lot of people I know are just zoomed out now. Totally. Um, you yeah. know, because every every meeting when when we started out, my family were having, you know, like once a week. Um yeah. and they were lovely. You know, we'd have yeah. tea on a Sunday together and everyone would join grandchildren, children, grandparents lovely. a lot. Now yeah. well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not quite so often perhaps oh, I don't I don't really want to and and, and even with friends actually because now we can we can see each other we can go for you know I've got the dog so we go for a socially distance walk I had to furlough um Adele um yep. when we kicked off so for for three and a half months we didn't see each other and and Adele and I have pretty much been in each other's back pockets as friends since we were 15 years old oh yeah you know yeah. so on and off for 35 years plus we've seen each other once twice three times a week yes yeah, amazing um, isn't it? and all of a sudden hardly yeah. any contact yeah um and we went for a walk with our dog she took her dog and then i went for a walk with her son um and took the dogs out for a walk and it was just it's i think this recovery phase we're kind of moving into mm -hmm. now I'd be really interested in your view, particularly, say, from a development point of view. You, 
develop talent. So you look at it from a coaching point of view, from a growth point of view. I know learning and development comes in, but I'm not talking about kind of group workshops now. Mm. That psychological safety piece is going to become so critical. I imagine sitting within the HR banner as you do, you're going to have your work cut out because everyone's going to want to have a piece of you when we do finally start saying, listen, if you want to come back into the office, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can socially distance in your office because quite frankly, I get lost in it every time I <laughs> go in. It is, it is, yes. Good, good for exercise though, if you're going from one, one uh, kind of part of it to phase one to phase two. <laughs> Especially if you're late for a meeting. <laughs> you know, but like, how, right. how do you see that creating that? safety piece because just as we talked about with our friends missing that hug Mm. people are gonna those guys you were describing before you know they're living on their own they can't wait to come back to the office yeah and there are those people who don't want to go back at all well that's the thing isn't it and it's really multifaceted and i i think it's it's one that we as a team have talked about as well you know kind of a bit more broadly in terms of well actually how do you make this work where and, and I said this to you, it's kind of like when everybody's remote, it kind of works. When everyone's together, it works, but it's that kind of more blended approach where you've got some people who are physically in the office, some people who aren't. Um, and what do different people need and what, what, what helps them to feel comfortable and safe, motivated and engaged because you want to obviously maintain all of that as well as meeting the business needs as well. So there's this balance, right, between what the individual is looking for out of their role, their career and their development and what the business needs. Right. And sometimes, Mm. sometimes it might be a bit of a rubber mat um, and and people need to make choices about what it is they want. And and, And I think, and we've seen this, right, we've seen organizations over this last time really stop and think about the way that they are set up and the way that they operate, you know, so much more focus on flexible working um, and, and actually how that, where, where in the past there's probably been in some places, and it's probably still is actually, I mean, I, I don't think it's a, something that everyone's seeing the light on, but where there's been like resistance in terms of enabling people to work more flexibly um, and never really, some are not really having hard evidence as to why it could be because the manager for whatever reason likes to keep their bdi on the on the individual it's about trust it's about control um because i always say you know sometimes you hear managers would say well they're just not going to perform when they're at home they'll you know do other things for me if somebody's not going to perform whether they're at home or in the office they're not going to perform where they are probably doesn't make a lot of difference in the long term um and we all go and do our washing you know, or whatever it is, put the washing on, whatever it is, we're at home. So I think there's this thing about, well, how do you balance the two? How do you, and, and you know, I do think a lot of organisations have really changed their view in, in having flexible working and people working in different ways. But equally, I think, me personally as an individual, I need to think about well, what, not just what works for me, but what works for the team and the organisation? How am I going to deliver to my stakeholders? Um, can I do that effectively virtually all the time? Do I need to be in the office for some stuff? And so I, so I don't know the answer. It's one of those things that I think, like a lot of this stuff, it's, it's complex. And there'll be lots of different iterations. I think there'll be lots of testing and trying and see what works. And obviously, it's not going to work perfectly for everybody. So... Uh, but I see, I, a risk, I, see, I see a risk attached to that, Monique, because I think for some organisations, I mean, I've joked before, I think even with someone I did an episode with, where he was saying, you know, I wouldn't want to be in commercial property right now because that must just be the worst job in the world. Mm. But I wonder whether some businesses now are going to have to start looking at the structure, internal structures of their teams. Mm-hmm. It's actually... One, we can work from home. Two, most companies have survived without the entire staff team being in play. And I think that creates a risk 
in in the market again putting pressure on a anyone sitting within an hr talent development function because that exposes people it makes them quite vulnerable or at least mm -hmm. feel that vulnerability yeah yeah um and yes i think so and and that's where you know all of this stuff is you know it's, it's, it's all coming through and it will touch on every part of the HR world, I guess, you know, how do you attract people? So, you know, what do you what do you stand for in this, as an organization? What do you offer? And then so how do you attract people? How do you engage and motivate people across and reward people? You know, all of those things with the way that things are moving and the way that people want to work, you know. Um, but not everybody wants to work from home. Not yeah. everybody, you know, that, that doesn't work for everybody. So I think, you know, I've read um, a couple of mentions of some organisations who are going fully working from home. And I'm like, well, okay, well, how does that then, how do you then attract, retain, motivate people who actually that's not the right model for them? Um, and all the other bits and bobs that go with that, because that's a whole, yeah, you know, won't go into that, but all the like contractual elements that would come into play about working from home, that being your main place of work. So... I think well, it, it's part of that, that stuff that we'll have to just wait and see a bit to see what happens, what people are looking to do, and have to be agile and responsive to that. So, but what the the other flip side of that of that I think is that people want to know, so they want certainty. So, how are you going to deal with this? What is going to be the process? When when will we come back into work if that's an option? When will we know um, what the flexible working arrangements are going to be? And some of that stuff, some of that, you just don't have it all worked out straight away. There's quite a lot of complexities involved with that, how you make it work practically, how you think of the different permutations. How do you, tell, do, how do you really effectively um, develop your talent when everyone is remote? I'm sure it's absolutely possible, lots of companies do it, but when you're an organisation that is probably more focused on relationship and visibility and those sorts of things. How do you how do you enable people to be to grow, to get the opportunities um, when they are not necessarily, you know it's, it's a great question. It's a great question and I think it goes right to the core of what nearly every leadership program I've been involved in designing and de delivering over the last 10 years which is giving leaders the ability to elevate their executive presence and make themselves visible to the VP and C level of the business. And all of a sudden, we're talking about, well, what does that even mean, make yourself visible? Mm -hmm. um, I think it changes the dynamic of, of how people will develop. Uh, managers you can develop with process and techniques and toolboxes, but actually mm -hmm. leadership which is perhaps what's really needed in these moments is all about that visibility and exposing yourself to the stretch of getting out, talking to lots of different stakeholders, working your influence and relationships, yeah. Yeah. which of course is, is key in your business. If we change tack for a moment, because both you and your partner are working from home, so you've both been stuck at home for the last four months, how have you made that balance and work without uh, killing each other? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> Thing is, we're stuck. We're, we're not stuck at all. It's great. Um, so yeah, I mean, and so, and it has been a big change because my partner um, would travel a lot for for work previously. He wouldn't be here. I don't know, half the week, probably, you know. So get to watch. That's oh, idyllic. Look at you rubbing your hands, looking at your wine rack. Exactly. Do what I want, what I want now. Now it's a complete uh, different story. So, so yeah, um, so now he, because because he was travelling um, here all the time. Um, so, and we live in a flat, so it's not, we don't have a lot of space. Here I am in the kitchen, he's in the living room. Um, but I don't know that it was entirely fair, but because he was there to start with, <laughs> I suppose I've, I love my kitchen space now. It's great. Um, actually, it's been actually been really good. I, I 
am very thankful that I have someone else in the house. Um, for me personally, um, I, I need kind of, even when I was working from home, occasion, you know, once a week before, if it was two or three days, I'd just drive myself mad. So, you know, right. it's good to have that. But someone I, else to drive mad. Yeah, that's right. And I do that very well. <laughs> uh, but it's... It, it's been interesting because we, we do talk about it quite a bit in terms of, you know, just actually I think it's been really, routine's really good. So we're both quite structured people. So, you know, we get up every morning, we go for a work, walk. That's our kind of start to the day. And what's lovely is that we actually do have, you know, breaks together. They might not be long, but a coffee or a lunch and we have dinner together. Um, so that for us has been nice in terms of being able to get some some good time together um, but we're both really busy so actually um, during the day it's kind of like we don't really see each other it's like being at work you know because we are and we and we work on very obviously very different things so um, but from a kind of I think you you what do I want to say we're a very close couple anyway but you become very I think a could, you know, it really tests your relationship sometimes in terms of being in each other's company 24-7. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, 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 and actually it's been a really good test for us because, you know, our plans are to, to um, in the future, I think I've mentioned to you, his, his, um, his father's Portuguese, Portugal, our plans to come to Portugal, so, um, and kind of live a different lifestyle. So actually, yeah, we can, we can do that. We know we can do that. Um, and, and for me, it's been it's it's been great. But I don't, when, you know, at the start of all of this, people going. I think on one of your other podcasts, somebody might have mentioned it as well. You, know, you can learn a new language. You can do this. You can do that. Oh, I have had no time to do any of that. Sorry, I have been super. And I know there are a lot of people out there who are not in the same fortunate position that I've been in. Being, you know, had a been in work the whole time, being really busy. I know there are a lot of people who who haven't had that, but. Just because you work at home doesn't mean you have shed loads of more time. No. Um, you know, and, and in fact, I not having a commute is great. That saves three hours out of my day. Um, but I'm still, you know, I, I, that's, I still work. You know, it, it kind of takes up that time. So I think the other thing is, and the other thing about being with someone else is that actually you know, you can, you can kind of keep yourself a little bit honest on that. So it's time to finish up now. You know, it's time to kind of lock the computer away, put work aside, spend some time together, kind of, as we all did at the start, get glued to the TV, looking at the numbers, kind of talk. That was horrible, that, 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 that well, first five, six weeks when we literally were counting deaths every day. Yeah. But that's the spiral, right, you get into. You just get addicted to it. And... Yeah. And you, um, it becomes the topic of conversation. We, I, I'm sure I'm not, we, we're alone, I'm not alone in this, but we kind of stopped watching it for a bit because it was just, it was just, that was the only thing that you were thinking about and talking about. And, it's, and, it, was, and, and it was the topic of conversation with whomever you spoke to. Right. Um, I, I removed apps from my phone, actually, because even when I was walking the dog, I find myself going on to CNN uh, or the John Hopkins website and, and doing the comparison charts of yep. how many had died in Italy per 100,000 compared to France, Spain, UK. Um, and I think you're right. I was, I was chatting to one of my coaches the other day. She's based out in Germany. And she was saying that her and her husband, he works in telecoms. So he was working from home. Actually, he's been super busy, obviously, yeah. in telecoms. Yeah. Um, and they've got two kids. Uh, 10 yes. and 4. I watched the podcast actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and she was saying, you know, that the two of them, every day, 5 o'clock, they'd have a cocktail together. Yeah, I like that idea. I tried to introduce that idea. Yeah, did it Did it fly? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't land. It was like, no, we don't have a drink every day during the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I borrowed the idea from her and I got, I got Emma to agree. Well, actually, Emma got me to agree to um, a bottle of wine on a Friday. So now every Friday from uh, four o'clock, the, the computers get shut down, everything closes okay. out, and uh, Emma chooses a bottle of wine, um, and we go out, the two of us, with one of the dogs, not the older dog, um, and we find somewhere to park up, 
um, as in sit down, not in the car, and then we I was going to say, drinking and driving. What? <laughs> yeah, so we go, we go, go for a nice drive, we drink a bottle of wine, <laughs> and then we drive home. Um, yeah, so we go and find. You know, I live rurally, so um, we go and find a nice field, uh, and and we drink the wine. And actually, it's yeah. it's a way of shutting off the week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it's important. I've I've heard horror stories um, over these four months of both parties working from home and driving each other mad. Yeah. With space, without space. We had two, you know, grown up children living here for, for most of lockdown. Yeah. I was just I was just amazed at how much food oh, <laughs> they would consume. <laughs> wow. Talk about consumption. That was incredible. Yes. No, um, yeah, yeah. But I think I, unless we make that effort to yeah. connect at home, it's probably quite easy just to get on and work. Yes, uh, and I think it's important. I mean, I'm, I tend to be the one that goes in and says, okay, are you ready to pack up now? He works a lot with the state, so often, you know, his, his days are later. Friday nights for us, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it to you before, Brad, it wouldn't have surprised me, but it's like Indian night. So we used to go to a local restaurant. Um, obviously, they closed. They then started doing takeaway. And we never, we very rarely have takeaway, but now it's takeaway Friday night, you know, <laughs> cider, beer, then we might go on to a bottle of wine. But I think that's really important. It's the same, actually, just taking it back to work with the team. So we have, we started very early on doing Friday night drinks. So 5.30 to 6 on a Friday. Um, and now we, we mix it up between Thursday and Friday because we have summer holidays at the moment, which is, uh, sorry, summer holidays, summer hours, which is great. And there's always a theme. So tonight's theme is Star Wars. Um, <laughs> Who are you going as? Oh, I should have brought it in, actually. I made a lightsaber out of toilet Excellent. roll and crepe, and crepe paper. I mean, um, really, you need to go and get it. <laughs> I can see it. I, I can go and get it. Star Wars is my favourite thing. <laughs> Hang on a second. I don't think I, <laughs> I think that's <laughs> While you go and get it, I'll, I'll observe the dog walking backwards and forwards yeah. behind me. <laughs> This is where I screenshot your backdrop, uh, Monique, and put it in as my virtual uh, virtual background. Um, I think... <laughs> here is my lightsaber. I love it. And I do have some music to play with it. I unfortunately don't have anything else. So I made that last night. I've been collecting the loo rolls for ages. Um, and are, you, are you going as a character? Will you be Lair? Will you be kind of um, uh, Ray? Well, um, that one, because it's pink, it's supposed to be red, it's more like Darth Vader. So I've got okay. Darth Vader's march to play. I don't really, I wanted to make a mask, but I ran out of time. But the, 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 <laughs> but the point is, we have a theme, and they're really fun. Everyone just kind of, you know, everyone comes up with something creative or different, and, um, and it's only half an hour, 45 minutes. But it's a, and I don't think, if I think back, you know, we would occasionally go for drinks after work, but not really have that regular connection. And I think all of us in the team um, really value it. And it's just so much fun. You know, it's just something I look forward to, to close out my week. Um, even if I do summer hours, if I haven't got anything planned, I'll, and it's on a Friday, I'll, you know, dial in because it's just a lovely way to finish out the week. It's really positive. It's really uplifting. Um, and you don't talk work? Uh Obviously, we're, you know, it's, it's like with any any friends that we work in the same kind of um, profession, you, you kind of get onto it. But no, it's, it's what you're doing on the weekend. We might have a quiz, you know, it might be questions, or, you know. Um, so it's, it's nice social stuff, work stuff probably peppers into it. But that's not the focus. It's more about just kind of um, having a laugh and um, starting our weekends off with a really positive no side. Well, that's how I feel about and, it anyway. And, and I'm intrigued. So are, are the themes always a Disney-based theme or do you sometimes visit other studios when it comes to your theme? <laughs> well, we haven't, but other themes have been things like we had a cocktail chic one. Mm. That's my favourite. We had, um, we had um, ones around country and western, We've had one, make a, make a hat. Um, 
an inanimate object from around the house. We've had quizzes on, you know, two lies and the truth, five fun facts about practically anything. So whatever, you know, yeah. it's just people just throw um, throw ideas into the pot. We have one team member who kind of manages it. She actually was quite fun. She was living um, up at her mum's for a while. And so we get her, her mum would get to choose it. So that was the biggest thing, you know, what's Lorraine picked? Which one has <laughs> she picked? And it's it's more about so that's <coughs> it's that positivity thing. So I'm you know I I I'm a fan of I'm I'm quite I can quite easily get into a negative mindset. So having the positivity element for me is important. So it just I find it quite uplifting. So it's just I think that we all find actually even after a hard you know really difficult week. Um, another colleague has seconded to a project and she's really busy but this is the one thing she tries to do every week is just join and and it's a, I think it's you know it helps with our team connection but also just in terms of mindset um, it's not so bad now obviously because we can get out and about but before when really you weren't you couldn't do anything um, it, I think it was a an important part of our, our kind of week. I, I, yeah, I think it's great. I know my mum, even with her own friends, was having on Friday at six o'clock, she was having something similar. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, she's sending me little WhatsApp pictures of she was yeah. all dressed up in a cocktail dress because she was having sundowners um, yeah. for her okay. Friday six o'clock drinks. Um, and she's stood there literally in a black cocktail dress, little tiara, and she's got her sort of yeah. cocktail. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She's, I mean, she's... Her. She's 75. So, um, but I think to your point, it's that mindset. And, and I wonder if that's one of the, you know, we kind of almost, we do, we kind of come full circle because it comes back to this idea of, of what you focus on grows. And I yeah. think that mindset of actually, it has been quite tough. There's probably tough times to come, different to what's been because it's the recovery bit or we're being told the whole time about a second wave, but I still, I'm yet to see all the data that, that shows that. Um, and in talking to medical people, you know, a, a one of our clients is a, is a medical uh, services company. So we talk to doctors all the time and they've said, you know, Brad, the bottom line is that until we actually have a vaccine. Yeah not everyone is going to feel like just getting on a plane, traveling, doing, getting on a train. All getting those on a train, things. all of those things, going into the office. And, and I think for, for a lot of people, you know, they, they thought this is only going to be for a few weeks or a few months. And then the realisation that this is actually the way things are going to be for the foreseeable future is quite a, a, a tricky one to get your mind around. Yeah. But it also means that as an organisation or organisations, people within organisations, leaders, have to think about how they operate. So how do leaders lead now? Um, you know, what what's the difference now in the way that we're set up and the way that we're going to operate? Um, the type of skills, capabilities, mindset, behaviours that we, we need to see our leaders having. And, and I think that's quite, can be quite a cultural shift and change. Yeah. And then what does that mean for people like myself and, and, and what I do in terms of enabling, supporting um, leaders and helping them to develop those skills, those capabilities, to think about the behaviours that they need to kind of hold up a mirror a bit in terms of actually, you know, what do we need to be really um, agile, to think differently? How do we make sure that we're still being really inclusive um, of everybody? You know, and that's a tricky thing too and there's such a spotlight at the moment as well on diversity and inclusion but if you think about working the way that we're working it could be quite easy to unintentionally exclude people um, so how do you make sure that you're being inclusive as a leader that you've got the right you know that you're demonstrating the right behaviors um, that you're engaging and motivating your team whilst managing all of that for yourself as well because you know Leaders are humans too, aren't they? And, you know, they're going through their own change of journey and, you know, their own personal situation that's influencing and impacting on how they are. So I think, you know, it's quite a tricky um, kind of road to kind of navigate it a bit in terms of well, how, do you, how do you help them and how do you help them to help themselves? 
Well, um, I think the word you use there that I think is the is the real goes right to the core is it's a shift. Leaders have to shift, and my sense when um, when I develop leaders around inclusive leadership, and not just the DNI piece, mm. just inclusive leadership as a as a theme. I think we have to start from the point of view of leading from compassion, leading from the heart. Absolutely. And yeah. that's the bit that I think will be the challenge for a number of leaders, the command, control, the alphas. Um, because if you don't lead from the heart right now, you won't be able to create the safety that brings people mm -hmm. back in to deliver. And I think that's, for me, the first challenge for leaders is how do you lead with compassion when the business doesn't change its targets for you? No, no, that's true. And, 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 and arguably some of those targets will be much more challenging going forward given the, you know, the, 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 the business and commercial kind of world out right. there. Um, so you still have to deliver that and they're going to be even tougher and more stretching probably with less resources and budget and all the rest of it. So how do you then be that compassionate, um, empathetic um, kind of leader? And and that's where some of the, and I know this is in your space as well, you know, that's where the kind of the emotional intelligence piece comes in as well, isn't it? So how attuned are people around that space? How aware are they of their own emotional intelligence, their own empathy? And how do they... If, if they know that it's not their natural kind of, you know, preference, how do they work on that or focus on it so that it comes through? Um, because, you know, we've talked about this a lot, you know, you, you, you're not going to just kind of change just like that. That takes time, it takes effort, it takes going backwards and forwards, yeah. you know. Um, and and you, at the heart, you are who you are. You know, you have your values and um, what drives you, um, what's important to you. Um, but how then do you kind of interpret that so that it actually is, is kind of, if you're, if you're a leader, it's kind of connecting with the people that you lead as well. So it's not just about you and what you want, but actually how do you connect and, and kind of bring those people along on the journey? So it's not an easy, you know, it's not an easy ask of people, is it? That, uh, for sure. In fact, I think we've fallen on a topic for a second episode, uh, oh. Monique. <laughs> yeah. um, we should come back if you want in a couple of months' time. Uh, and we should look at how do you drive inclusivity in leadership um, and help people's behaviour adapt to what is now a different landscape. I mean, mm -hmm. I know people use the phrase the new normal, and I've tried not to use new normal, pivot and unprecedented are the three words or phrases I've made an effort yeah. not to. Um, and I also, I hear you, you know, when, when it all kicked off and people were trying to write books and learn musical instruments. Um, I don't have a book in me, I've, I found. I always thought I wanted to write a book. Oh, really? Turns, oh. out, I, turns, out, I, <laughs> turns out I didn't. Turns out my ego wants to write a book because oh. I fancied the idea of being published. But actually, I didn't want to write a book. Um, I didn't want to learn a new musical instrument. Um, I have a keyboard behind me and uh, actually it has a rug on it so the cat can sit comfortably on it. Nice. Um, it's more thoughtful of you. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't want to learn a new instrument. I, I'm not linguistic, so I didn't want to learn a new language. My brother learned Italian, um, which was quite in interesting. My mother learned Latin and started to kind of oh. do Latin translations. And I'm like, I no. just want my business to be intact and I want my relationships to be intact and if I can yep. get through lockdown with those two things I will be bullish <laughs> I think that's a win, you know I would like to learn Portuguese but I'm going to wait till I live in Portugal to do that because I think that's the best way I'm going to immerse myself but that, that's the thing yeah I think the experience as a whole it evolves all the time but and it's, I think you know I love um just observing people and uh uh, getting on my soapbox about stuff as well, according to, to my other half. Um, <laughs> um, but it's just really interesting observing how, how people react and, and how it's kind of forced to change. And you, you, 
you, you see this with any big major event, you know, any world war or whatever like that, the, the advancements that we make as a human race, either in technology or the way that we operate, the way that people, although we moan and groan, really do adapt to change when they're forced to quite quickly. Um, you know, you look at the way that people have adapted to the way that we work now. But that has its own problems. I was talking to a colleague yesterday and she was saying, you know, some people are now getting agoraphobic because they don't want to go out. They're, they're frightened of that. And that, you know, brings up all sorts of other things, which is concerning in terms of how we... But we, I feel we're herding, you know, humans are herding animals. We like to be together. So one way or another that connect connections will start to come. It just is going to look different. Um, well, we seek social interaction, don't yeah. we? Or most yeah. of us do. I know I'm right. socially distant for 28 years now uh, out of choice <laughs> and get my, um, get my fix of human from the work that I do. Yeah. Um, but as a general rule, most, most human beings seek connection. We seek love, we seek partners. Uh, we seek friendships and warmth. That's where we get that warmth from. And I still think it goes back to your point about inclusivity, that not just leaders, actually, all of us, all of us. the world has had a unique opportunity to be completely empathic for the first time, all at the same time, about the same thing. We've yeah. all been through this. Yeah. So yeah. actually... We, for those people who were looking to, you know, can I fake empathy? Can I learn how to do it? Actually, we all have it right now. This moment in time mm -hmm. is, a, is a global empathic moment. Yeah. For me, that's one of the most positive things when it comes to working with leaders, that there isn't anyone out there who doesn't understand what someone else has been through. It might look yeah. different and the makeup is different, but the core themes, they're the same. They're the same. Yeah, the same. Uh, will you come back in a couple of months and talk uh, inclusivity then? Uh, yes, of course, if you would like to have me back. That would be great. I think that would be brilliant. Uh, Moni, what a laugh. Thank you so oh, much for you. spending some time during your very busy day. You can get back to being interrupted now um, <laughs> on, all all right. your, on all your emails. And we'll <laughs> see, you, see you on the next version of lockdown. Lovely. Thanks, Brad. It's brilliant. Been a Thanks, Take Moni. care. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye.